KS 13801 Hi, my name is Siti Anas Raya and my matrix number is 138178 Hi, my name is Gabriel Anod John and my matrix number is 18668 So today our group will be explaining about first the introduction Second the characteristic Next, subfile Next, classification and and Bata Bata. <laughs> so let's start. Assalamualaikum and hi to my fellow friends and also our beloved biology lecturer, which is Jamil. So what are we going to learn about today? Our group will be explaining about the introduction for this topic, the characteristics of phylum Chordata, the subphylum, and lastly we're going to focus on vertebrata. Introduction. What exactly is a uh, phylum chordata? So phylum chordata consists of animal with a flexible rod supporting their dorsal or backside. The phylum name derives from the Greek root word chord, which means strain. So most species with the phylum chordata are vertebrates or animal with backbone. Characteristic of chordata. So first, characteristic of chordata is notochord. Notochord located just below the nerve cord. The embryonic notochord is replaced by the vertebral column during development. In some chordates, the, no the notochord is a major support structure. In fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals, the notochord in is present only in the embryo. Second, the characteristic of chordata is dorsal to bear nerve cord. The nerve cord develops as a hollow tube above the notochord. In vertebrates, the nerve cord, often called the spinal cord, is protected by the vertebrate. The nerve cord of the embryo develops into the central nervous system, which consists of the brain and spinal cord. Next, the characteristic of chordata is pharyngeal sleep. The slits and the structure that support chordates are modified for gas exchange to support hearing and other functions during vertebrate evolution. In humans, they appear only in the early embryo as a few indentations, not as often slits. They are therefore called pharyngeal clefts in, in a human embryo. Fourth characteristic of chordata is post anal tail. Most chordates have a muscular tail that extends posterior to the anus. In humans, it regresses into the tail point and wagging tail in other mammals. The last, the last characteristic of chordata is myotomes. Myotomes is the muscle of the chordate body are segmented into blocks. Muscles are attached to the skeleton to provide a movement. Next, we move on to the classification of chordata. The phylum chordata is divided to four smaller and more specific subphylum. The subphylums of chordata are subphylum urochordata, subphylum hemichordata, subphylum cephalochordata, and subphylum vertebrata. The examples of subphylum urochordata are sea squirt and sea peach. Meanwhile, the examples for subphylum hemichordata, there is only one, which is a corn worm. Next, for the subphylum cephalochordata, the examples are lancer and picaya. Finally, we have subphylum vertebrata and the examples are cat and parrot. By the way, there are still many examples for vertebrata but we decided to choose on this one. Moving on to the characteristics of subphylum vertebrata. The first one would be vertebrata must possess the five chordate characteristics that we have already explained earlier. Second, the embryonic notochord is replaced by a vertebral column composed of individual vertebrates. This actually means during the early stages of life, vertebrates only have embryonic notochord, but later, after further development, uh, an individual or vertebrate would actually possess a vertebral column. Next, we have distinctive feature of skeletal elements such as bones and cartilage in the cranium. As we all know, cranium is actually a part of the skull that encloses the brain. Number four, vertebrates have an advanced closed circulatory system 
And lastly, number five, vertebrates have a high degree of cephalization and complex sense organs are concentrated in the head. During the development of an embryo, the process in which sense organs, the mouth, and nervous system concentrate towards the anterior side of the body, which is the top part of the body, producing hair is known as cephalization. Subphylum vertebrata can be classified into six different groups. Chondrichthys, Aves, Reptilia, Amphibia, Mammalia, and Ostichthys. Next, we are moving on to the characteristics of each subphylum vertebrata. For the first class is chondrichthys, also known as cartilaginous fish. These chondrichthys don't have any swim bladder, so they so they have to swim continuously to prevent from sinking to the bottom. They also have lateral lines that allow them to detect water pressure difference. Last but not least, they don't have any operculum which covers their gills. We we'll move on to the next class, Osteactis. This class include fish and eels found in both salt and seawater. These bony fishes and eels have their gills covered by an operculum. However, only a few species have actual lungs. Osteactis have swim bladder, which is an air sac inside their body used to control buoyancy wherever inside the water. And the next ca characteristic of subphylum vertebrata is class amphibia. Amphibians include newts, salamanders, frogs, tots, and sicilians. They are ectotomic, which means they are cold-blooded animals. Their skin is thin, soft, moist, and lacks scales, except in sicilians. Amphibians use gills when in larva stage, in a young stage, then replaced by lungs when they are adults. Amphibians have three chambered heart, which include two atria and one ventricle. Last but not least, most amphibians undergo complex metamorphosis, which means they experience transformation from an immature state to an adult stage. Next, class Reptilia. First of all, reptiles lay their eggs, and their eggs are amniotes, which means their eggs are protected from desiccation and other environmental problems by the extra membrane called amnion. Not just that, the outer layer of the egg is also covered by a leathery or calcium-based shell. Furthermore, reptiles have horny epidermal scales, as it will protect the reptiles from abrasion and loss of body moisture. Reptiles breathe using lungs. However, many turtles use the moist surface of their cloaca for gas exchange. Lastly, we have the class Aves, which is the class for birds that are able to lay eggs. The examples of this class are penguins, sunbird, ostrich, and ducks. The animals in this class is endothermic, and the special characteristics of these animals in this class are they have feathers used in flight, temperature regulation, and coloration. Moreover, they have a four-chambered heart and their bones are lightweight and hollow. They also have four limbs that are modified as wings. Characteristics of subphylum vertebrata, class mammalia. Actually, mammals have characteristics that are not found in other animals, such as three middle ear bones, hair, and memory glands. Other characteristics are highly differentiated teeth and developed brain, endothermic, which means mammalia are capable of generating internal heat. Next, different species of mammals have evolved to live in terrestrial and aquatic habitats. Mammals can be classified into three different groups, monotremes, marsupials, and eutherian. Monotremes are actually egg-laying mammals, and there are two examples under this group, which is echidna, and platypus. Both of these animals are only found in Australia and there are only two known monotremes across the world. Next, we have marsupials, which are mammals with pouches. The examples are koala and kangaroo. Both of these animals are also well known in Australia as well. Lastly, there's eutherian or placental mammals. These are the mammals that are commonly found 
such as cats and horses. Now, let's recap what we had learned in this video. First, we learned about the general characteristics of phylum Chordata. Then, we move on to the subphyla of this phylum, which are Eurochordata, Hemichordata, Cephalochordata, and Vertebrata. After that, we went deeper into the subphylum Vertebrata that consists of six classes. The classes are Apes, Chondrichthys, Ostichthys, Amphibia, Reptilia, and Mammalia. Finally, we ended with the classifications of Mammalia. So that's all from us. Thank you. Bye.